and welcome to our session today, our hands-on session, Automate Your Invoice Processing with SAP Build Process Automation. I'm Stefan and I'm joined today by my colleague Priya, who is an Adoption Senior Specialist, I'm Product Manager of Build Process Automation, and we are really looking forward to do this session, this hands-on session today with you. By the way, you have two options more or less, either you can just follow what we are showing you on the screen, if you want, you can also do it. Uh, side by side on your own. I mean, you have access to all the materials. You probably have also already set up your system in your environment. So I think then we are good to go. So first of all, I would like to give you a kind of overview when we talk about SAP Build. I mean, which has launched been launched yesterday, especially in the keynote by Jürgen Miller. What is meant about? I mean, with SAP Build, you can on the one hand side build new apps. Uh, you can also create business sites with the help of SAP Build Work Zone. And for and foremost, you can also build processes. You can automate processes. And in fact, um, as you know, this is why you are here. This is what we would focus on today. What has changed here dramatically, also compared to the approaches in the past, we are really focusing here on the low-code, no-code approach. This is also what you will experience today. So in fact, you will do a lot of things. You will see a lot of things. But in fact, you will not write a single line of code because the creation of the processes, the automation of these processes, you will do with drag and drop functionality. And also you will see how you can leverage different capabilities, what we are delivering within SAP Build Process Automation. And this actually brings me to the topic, what is inside Build Process Automation? And when we take a closer look under the hood, so to speak, you will see, I mean, as the name says, you can automate processes. You can create processes. This could be, for example, extensions of standard business processes which are running in your business applications, like, for example, SAP s or other business applications like success vectors or so. You could also orchestrate processes across different systems, if you will, and you can also create net new processes and workflows, which you would like to yes, use within your organization and probably also where you have a kind of a different way compared to your competitor. When we are talking about processes, most likely at a certain point in time, you also have the need to enhance them with decisions, with business rules. Think about you have any kind of policies within your company, uh, maybe coming from inside or from outside. You also need to maintain them and also ensure that they are working along your processes. And this is what you will also be able to do with SAP Build Process Automation. Once the processes are run running, most likely think about an approval process. Someone needs to be there and push a button to do the approval. And to do this so, you can, on the one hand side, consume this task within a unified launchpad, which you will also see later on. But you can also create the task, the forms, to be more precise, also in the same environment. And I think this is also one of the big advantages which you are providing here with SAP Build, with SAP Build Process Automation, that you can do everything within one single environment and also here leveraging a citizen developer experience. When we are talking about processes, I said you can do extensions, you can create new processes, but sometimes it's also needed that you do some kind of task automation. So certain probably manual steps you have done before in your process where people are uh, typing in any kind of data, sometimes also behaving like a robot, if you will. And that's always a good sign where it's better that a bot is actually doing the task for you. And this is what we are providing here with the capability of task automation. In combination with this, another capability, what you will also see today, by the way, is the area of document understanding. So the first step, what we have done here actually is to provide you capability where you can extract information from different type um, of documents and include them this information in a meaningful way in the flow of your process. And when I talk about the flow of your process, on the one hand side, there are capabilities available, let's say for the administrators. So to take a closer look at all the technical activities, but on the other hand, we are also providing with the process visibility capability, the possibility to actually define key performance indicators, to also observe the performance of the process, compare them, and then also do the needful actions if anything is going wrong. 
needless to say that we are also integrating with different uh, apps. May this be, of course, the SAP Build family, if you build SAP Build apps, SAP Build Work Zone, but also Proco tools like the Application Studio. And also we can integrate with SAP, non-SAP systems in the cloud, on-premise, whatever you want to do, um, if needed, also leveraging the SAP integration suite. If you haven't heard about the news, what we um, were talking about, uh, about SAP Build Process Automation, just to, to mention a few of them. On the one hand side, we have the integration with SAP 6 and a half view. So this means whenever you are doing some kind of process insights and you find out, oh, probably there's something wrong, you will get a kind of recommendation what you could improve with the help of SAP Build Process Automation to be more precise with the help of using the pre-built content packages we have in there. So what is meant with that? So therefore we have created several packages, including workflows, processes, pre-built bots, also the user interface the business rules, and you can consume them and you don't need to start each and every time from scratch. Another thing I would like to mention, we are also now um, connecting to Google Workspace applications, but to this we will come also later in the session. And the interesting part, I think you have done a phenomenal choice uh, joining us here in the Samsung session because most of the capabilities I've just talked about, you will do actually in the Samsung session. So this means you will build a process. You will use a decision to determine an improver. You will also create a bot who is actually using the document understanding capability to extract some information from a document. When we are talking about use cases where SAP build process automation can be used within your organization, let me give me uh, you one here, one thing on your way. First and foremost, we are not really binded to any kind of LOB or to any kind of industry. So this means you can use SAP build process automation each and everywhere within your organization. This gives you the freedom to extend processes, automate parts of a process, um, for example, also digitalize processes which probably have been manual before or to some degree semi-automated to extend processes and this in different areas. May it be lead to cash, how to retire, time to operate or source to pay, just to mention a few of, let's say, the bigger scenarios which you also most likely have within your organization. But today, we don't want to focus on each and every use case today. We really would like to focus on one dedicated use case. And let me introduce this use case to you. In fact, it's about invoices. So imagine within your organization, invoices coming in from also different organizations itself, and probably they need to be handled differently. You will also get them in different formats, paper-based or via email, probably as a PDF document. And most likely also based on the information in this invoice, they must be handled differently and probably even an approval by someone is needed. Well, we take a look how this process is looking right now. So the invoice are coming in, probably someone is doing a manual entry of the required information in the spreadsheet. Then the spreadsheet is sent to someone to approve the invoice. Then the approvals are given again in such a spread in a, such a spreadsheet sent back to the requester. And then finally, at a certain point in time, if nothing gets lost in between, someone is maintaining the invoices in the ERP system. You probably think, is this reality? Yes, I can tell you, this is still reality in some of our organizations, but we have here a solution. And this is just one example how you can make use of SAP build process automation. But after you're using it, most likely, your process could look like this. So the invoice is coming in, will be received, it will be scanned. Automatically, the relevant information is extracted. Then to decide who could be the relevant approver also based on certain conditions, a business rules is uh, used automatically. In case there is an approval necessary, also the process is taking care of this and providing the approval task to the respective approver. And then last but not least, this invoice is then automatically, automatically pushed to the ERP system for further processing. To boil it down, how this could look like, so someone is triggering the process for the invoices, then a bot is extracting the needed information from the invoice, a decision is used to determine who could be the approver, 
And then depending on the invoice details, an approval is triggered or not. And all of this is happening within SAP Build Process Automation. And all of this we are building within the next two hours approximately. The last step, please forgive us, is not part of this exercise, but it would just be that then actually the invoice will be created and also further processed, for example, in SAP S4 HANA. So now let's take a closer look how we could actually automate this form of paper-based invoice posting. And therefore, now I would like to hand over to Priya, who will give you an overview of the exercise. Hello, everyone. A warm welcome from my side as well. So today we would be uh, working on an exercise where you would automate your invoice processing using SAP build process automation. So I guess all of you would have received the prerequisites where you would have subscribed to SAP build process automation, either in trial account or in free trial account. I noticed that uh, people have asked the questions that uh, process automation is not available in trial account. It is available. You can search it with SAP process automation. The rename is still yet to happen. So, and uh, all these details are mentioned in the prerequisites, uh, which we have shared to you. And first we will, uh, maybe I'll start sharing my screen now. So you would have received this uh, prerequisites document where we had mentioned, how do you subscribe to the, how do we subscribe to the process automation in the trial account? And even we had mentioned, how do you subscribe to the free tire account process automation as well? Once you have successfully subscribed to the process automation, then you, uh, you would find it under instances and subscription in your BTP cockpit. You can click on this, uh, go to application button and you would be navigated to the SAP build. So SAP build is one stop uh, where you can build your um, apps, where you can automate your business process and also create your digital experience as well. And lobby is a homepage where you can see all the list of the projects and you can access your projects, do an export, import, and many more. And store uh, where you have all the pre uh, sample content, whether the business content or the learning content, which is available uh, and can be readily used by the customers. In the monitor section, you can monitor your uh, business process. It's a technical monitoring, which is available. You can see the automation jobs as well. When you come to the settings, uh, you can see your settings of the desktop agent settings, uh, set, uh, destination settings, and also you can see the mail server settings. All of the things can be uh, configured in your settings. A prerequisite to start this uh, exercise is to install your desktop agent. It can be either desktop agent 2 or agent 3. I would recommend to use desktop agent 3 because it has a lot of enhanced features where it has an automatic update and you can easily switch between your uh, tenants and also the modes. So I highly recommend to use desktop agentry and which takes a few seconds to uh, install as well. All of these are mentioned in your prerequisites. Okay, now let's get into our exercise now. Let's start creating our business process. So I use a quick uh, create and then I build an automated process. So what is a pro process here? So process is nothing but a set of all repetitive tasks uh, in an organization uh, where you want to automate it. So now let's create a business process here. <clears throat> I'm creating a process. I just give a project name here. So I just gave her uh, ID. Project is successfully created. And now uh, we will start building our process for invoice processing. Let's create a simple form. We have a lot of artifacts that we'll be exploring soon. So in the first process, we would be creating a simple form. <clears throat> So forms are nothing but the interactive uh, based forms, which has all the simple UI elements like text elements, input fields, uh, and you can even have the file upload options and the radio buttons and also the uh, value helps, which will be coming soon. Okay, now you are uh, navigated to the SAP build process automation screen where you can start creating your process. 
you can directly create the process. So it's my invoice processing. Once a process is created, you would be navigated to the process builder screen and start building all your tasks here. We'll be creating a simple form. A form can be triggered, a form can be created and these forms are used either to start a business process or you can even use these forms later on in any one, in any one of your workflows. So I'll create this uh, form here. So it's my invoice request form. So once a form is created, you can navigate to the form by clicking on three dots here and then open editor. You would be navigated to the form editor. You can see all the uh, UI elements which are available here. We'll talk about the file upload option later on. We'll first build our request form. So I'll enter my customer name. And we should even give our file path here where exactly you would uh, uploading your document, your in, where your uh, invoice document is stored on your uh, local machine. Okay, and <clears throat> you can see these fields can be made mandatory by using the required option here, because these are the mandatory fields that we would require to extract the data, especially the file path. I would save my form. Let's go back to our process. So the second step in building our uh, process is where you want to extract the data from the given uh, from the given invoice document that you're uh, talking about. So for that, we have to add a dependency of the docs. So I go to the dependencies. I want to add the docs dependency here, add a dependency from the business project, document information and extraction SDK. So once you have successfully added these dependencies, you would be seeing these activities which are related to uh, invoice when you create an automation. So let's create an automation. I select my agent version. As I said, the desktop agent installation is mandatory here. So when automation is created, all the basic SDK packages like core SDK and Excel SDK or other additional SDKs, you have to add it uh, manually through the dependencies. So our automation is created successfully. So let's navigate to our automation now. So before we get into the uh, automation details where we are extracting the data, so I want to give a quick overview about the document information extraction here. So it's one of the most important aspects of automating your business process uh, to extract the reliability uh, data from documents such as invoice, purchase order, payment advice, or any other custom documents. So in a traditional workflow, this information is trapped uh, and it has to be read manually in a tedious manner and it's affecting the time and cost for any organization. Using document information extraction from SAP, which is part of the AI business services portfolio offering, it's a pre-trained service and it leverages deep learning algorithms to extract the structural semantic information from, and also from the unstructured documents at the same time. We have specialized uh, models which are available. And with SAP build process automation, it allows you to extract all the scanned documents or images in a user-friendly and low-code and no-code manner with the help of the dedicated activities. So let's have a look at all these activities now. Since we have added the Docker dependency, you should be seeing all the doc activities now. So let's search for the document uh, information extraction activities.
Let me directly use extract. Let's confirm if the dependency is added. Yeah, it's added. So now you are able to see all the activities related to the document information extraction, uh, which are available in automation. Let's have a look on all these three activities before we select the activity that we would require for our use case. So extract data pre-trained uh, pre model. Let's consider the use case where um, you want to retrieve your uh, fields like um, uh, gross amount of your in invoice and also send the name, the invoice number. So all the general fields which are available. So you just want to provide the path where your in where your uh, document is stored and just mention whether it's a uh, payment uh, advice or a purchase order or a docs or an invoice. So you can directly mention only those two fields and you can extract your data. You need not create any other things here. So let me just drag and drop this all the activities to show you one by one. As you can see in the extract pre-trained uh, pre model, you just have to mention what is the type of the document that you want to uh, extract the data. So if I select invoice or payment advice here, you can select the document type, just provide the document path. It would require all the fields uh, that you would require to retrieve the data from the, extract the data from those documents. Now, let's come to the second activity, which is nothing but the extract template. So there would be some scenarios where you would retrieve the basic information like invoice number, gross amount, but there are few other information that you want to retrieve from the document, which are not retrieved through the pre-trained model. So in those use cases, you would use the activity extract data template. In these use, in this activity, you have to create your own document template. So you'll create a customized document template. You would annotate the fields uh, which you want to retrieve. You would, uh, we'll see this, how do we do it in our exercise as well. And we have an, another activity regarding the um, OCR, which is, uh, this is the activity open document online OCR. This activity is used for unstructured documents where uh, you're not able to retrieve the information, unstructured documents, and only the string operation is only the method that you have, you can extract. So which is not possible to any of these three activities and only the string operation is required. And if you want to retrieve the entire document information in one go. So this is a place where we use the OCR here. And there would be use cases where you want to uh, extract the data other than either purchase order, uh, payment advice, and also the invoice. In those cases, uh, you and you would like to extract the text, especially here. In those cases, we go for the OCR. And all these activities uh, have uh, the doc template. All these activities would require uh, retrieve the data for multiple languages. And we have a documentation which would uh, display the list of languages that it would support as well. It supports the images. And especially uh, when you're using OCR for handwritten documents, it supports only the English as of now. Okay, now let's get into our use case where we would extract the invoice document, data from the invoice document. I don't want to go to the pre-trained model, even though my uh, document is of invoice, because I want to show you how do you annotate the document so that it would be helpful for you uh, once you go back as well. How do you retrieve the data from uh, other uh, documents other than invoice or purchase order or payment advice? So I would use extract data template. So before uh, you use the extract data template, you have to create a uh, document template here. So create and I'll just remove this. Create and then document template. You have to create your own template. As I said, you can even try with a pre-trained model because it's an invoice document but I'll show you the other way as well. So I'm uploading my invoice now. So 
So let me create a uh, standard document here as invoice. And I will create a new uh, schema as well. So what are the fields that you want to retrieve? Let's take a basic information of document number, the gross amount, and also the sender name. So once you add these uh, fields, a document template and SDK packages are added, your schema is created in the background, and then you would be navigated to the document information extraction editor, where you can annotate your fields. So it's now uploading your sample document. Make sure that you have all the required roles if you want to have access to the document information extraction editor as well. So now you would be seeing the invoice that you, we would be extracting the data from. So we have considered three fields, invoice number, sender name and also the uh, amount. Let's have a look at the document, invoice document that I have uploaded. So this is the invoice document that I have uploaded and we'll be retrieving the invoice number, the center, uh, sender name and the gross amount here. So I click on edit. Let's annotate it here. Since we have uh, selected the fields that you want to annotate, they are available. So these three fields we have already selected. So this is our document number. A gross amount, a sender name. And let's annotate our gross amount as well. So this is the way how we extract the data. So to show this, I have selected the extract data uh, uh, template activity instead of the predefined model, even though it's an invoice. So it's a gross amount. I just don't want the currency type here. because gross amount is of the type number. And yeah. now we have successfully annotated it. Let's save it and activate our template. Let's go back to our process now, automation. As you can see, all the fields are annotated and you can see the document number, your gross amount, <laughs> and your sender name, which has been uh, annotated and where it's ready to extract the data from. Now we'll go back to our automation. Since we have created our own template, our own schema, we'll be using the activity extract data template. And in the scenarios you want to uh, provide the path, we have already created a path uh, in the form, which would be an input parameter to your automation. So automation here. So I'll go to the input and output information, which is an add new parameter, and I will retrieve my file path. Let's give a bit different name, invoice file path, and it's a string. And I even want to extract the uh, data, which I will save this here. So if you see here, your schema has been created, your template has been created. In the schema, you can observe that all the fields that you would require are in a different form as uh, header fields using a docs, a, a API business service, 
you would see here it's in a different format but i don't require all this information i just require the document number and the value in this uh, schema so i would create a diff other data type which uh, matching the exact fields and only the required values here so let me create a data type here And let's add the fields that we would require. So we have uh, wanted to extract our sender name. Which is a string and the gross amount, which would be a number. So let me select the type as a number here. And your invoice number. And I save it. Now let's go back to your automation. And I want to create an output parameter, which is of a similar data type. Once we extract the data, I even want to send back the data to my process through automation. So that is possible by creating an output parameter in your automation. And you would create an output parameter, which is of the same data type. Once these input and output parameters are available, you can go back to your process and start the mapping as well. So let me create a new output parameter as well. These are my invoice details. And it is of the type, data type, which I have just created, which is invoice data type. You can see it here, invoice data type. Now let's save this. And you can see now we have created the schema here. So I'll select the schema that I've created, my schema and the document template. We have created our template, which is an invoice template that I created. And what is the document path? As I said, we would be getting this uh, structure, uh, the file path from the input form that we have created and we have created the input parameter here so it's a file path and I, we get all the extracted data in the output parameter and it's in a raw format so I have created my own variable to extract the data so let me create a variable of the type inverse data so you can create the variables from the data section and you can see that all the data types that you can create. So I want a variable of invoice data type that I have created. I will create a custom data here because the data that is retrieved from the extract data template is in a different format and the one which I want is in a different format. Let's do a correct mapping. As I said, we don't require all these details like value, raw value, page number, the co confidence level. So I would only require the value here. So the value is the for the document number. I'm passing the document number here. So the sender name, the first field. So let me pass the sender name. So sender names, value. The value that you have retrieved from the step one is map it to this in our data variable and we are setting the value here. And the gross number, amount, it's a value. And then the invoice number, which is in the header fields, the document number. Okay, let's do a, log message here so that you would understand how the values are also retrieved from the invoice document. So I would use a log message. So which would be helpful to retrieve the details and you can see it in the debug mode. So what is my data? It's nothing but the value that I've created in my second step, which is the exact value that I would require. And how do I pass the data to outside of my automation to the process? So in the end, uh, since you have created an output parameter, you have to pass the values of the output parameter by selecting the end here. 
and it's my second step, my variable. So let's save the automation now and let's try testing it. Okay, we have done the mapping here. Let's finish the mapping and then test the document because it asks for the few more errors which is having because we have created the input and output parameters and it's expecting the binding now. Okay, there was a timeout. I'll just... So the invoice file path. Where are we getting the file path that you have to pass it from automation? It is from the request form, so the file path. It looks like it is not mapped. Let me map it again. Okay, and now let's save this. Now let's go back to our automation and then test it. Since we are not testing it from the form, we have to provide our file path where your invoice document is showed, uh, shared uh, on your local system. <clears throat> and when you start testing your automation de uh, debug mode, make sure that you are connected to your agent. And as of now, unattended mode is active. We will switch it to the uh, design mode. Okay, now I'll test it. So desktop agent is restarting here. So as you can see, the input parameters that we have provided is an in invoice file path. So it's available as a parameter here and we would enter our uh, file path, which we are invoice document file path, which is available on your local machine. Since we had questions on the document management, where you had a question like, now since the file upload option is available, can I uh, upload an invoice document through your, uh, through your uh, file and can I access in the automation? As of now, we don't have any direct activities where you can retrieve the documents that was uploaded in DMS, but using the API service calls uh, of DMS, you can retrieve the document and store it on your local machine, and then you can extract the document. So we don't have any direct activities which are possible. Uh, this will be this feature will be available next year. So you need not write any custom script, and you would uh, have the low code and no code uh, tool experience as well. Let me just execute it again. Yeah, I would queue my file path here. And you can see with the desktop agent three, uh, you can even notice what is the type of the mode your desktop agent is in. As of now, it is in an attended mode. So when you're in debug mode, uh, when you debug, it would automatically change it to the design mode, which is nothing but the debug mode. So in meantime, when this is uh, coming up, I would even show you how we have used uh, directly the pre-trained model. The same project, um, I have done it in using the pre-trained uh, model. As I mentioned, we have two ways of doing it since it's an invoice document. So I had directly used a pre-trained model where you can directly mention the file path and you will stay, uh, mention the type of the document. So you can easily extract the data in uh, just avoiding all the hurdles of creating a document template, annotating your document template and all the other stuff.
It looks like I have a connectivity issue at my end. Okay, so you can see here extract data pre-trained model, which I've used to retrieve the data for the same uh, type of document where I just mentioned as invoice and the file path is uh, directly the file path where you have stored it. Let's just check. This is... Okay, maybe I'll hand it over to um, uh, the St Stefan now, uh, who would uh, taking the next exercises. In meantime, it's executing. When I execute the entire business process, I would show how uh, the value is even retrieved as well. Okay, thanks a lot, Priya, for building us the automation and also showing how this is working. So now we will move on. And So you can see my screen, I guess so. So let me move on. So we have now the extraction of the invoice data here. And now the next thing, what we would like to do is actually to create a new decision. And with the decision, we would like to determine who is the approver in this case. So determine approver now. The rule artifact is there and let us now open the editor. So as you can see, you have here a kind of decision diagram. You see there's an input coming in, then something is happening here. So the decision is working and then there will be a result. But for this, we would actually need to define the input as well as the output parameter. So for the input parameter, we are just using the invoice, which we have created before. So which I created before by Priya. So this means, therefore, we are using the same data type. For the output parameter, there we need to add an additional data type. And this is what we're doing here by clicking on this class symbol. You know, create a data type and call it approval. So here we are actually just adding one field, which would be the email address. And this is what we will use actually to identify then also later on the approval. Let me save this. And then go back to the business rule. And now we are able to also add the output parameter. And as you have seen, this information is now gone. So I have successfully completed all the needed prerequisites. But nevertheless, there is still an error mentioned here. But let's take a look. In fact, it's not really an error. It's just a warning, if you will, so that let me know, oh, there's still a rule missing. And that's no problem, because this is what we're doing right now. So we are clicking now here and would like to add a new rule there. And therefore, we can make use of this um, new wizard, which has been introduced. And in this case, we would like to create a decision table. As you can see, it would also be another possibility to create, for example, a text rule. But in this case, um, it should be a decision table. Decision table to determine the approval. So in our next step, um, what we are actually configuring here are the conditions. 
And of course, for the conditions, we don't use the output, but we would rather use the input. And now we could either add everything, but in fact, we don't want to use everything. Uh, in fact, we would just like to use the sender name to make this one as one of our conditions to determine who should be the approval. On the next step, we are now configuring the results. And this is quite easy because the result should actually be the email address. So, and based on this, we can now do review. So this means we have here a condition. If the invoice sender name then is on, on a particular value, then the result should be the email address. And then now let us create the skeleton of this decision table. So as you can see here right now, we have now the skeleton available of the decision table. By the way, you could even import or export here um, Excel sheets if you want to. So in case probably you have maintained already some of these decision tables uh, up front or a business user has done this, whatever, not, then you can also do this. So in this case, um, I would like to check in um, whether this um, send the name is existing here and you can either make use here also of these to sub functionality or also type in the data directly. In this case, you would like to have the ABC communication company and this would be our condition. And if this is true, then what should happen actually in this case the email or to be more precise, the approval should come into my inbox. So let us now check what should happen if this is not the case. So therefore we are including another row and there we say also exist, exist in, and then let us use any other company And if this is the case, then we would like to send it to our colleague, Jane Doe. So now we have configured the decision table with the if condition and then the result. And then the last step would be to actually save it. By the way, um, one, one good advice, it's always good to save also the stuff in between so that you have everything uh, available there, what is needed. So now let us go back and you can see there is still this, this red marker. So let's check what's missing. In fact, what is missing right now here are the inputs and outputs and the invoice. This is what we're using. As I said before, the data type uh, which should be the input of our business rule. And therefore we also need to um, connect them now with the data in the process content. And by the way, the process content is really a great concept because there every information, every artifact, every attribute is stored and you can use this information of the process content each and everywhere within the uh, definition of the process itself. So we have here the document number, then we have the gross amount, by the way, as you can see, we are also matching here the type. So we have here a number, so that's correct. And then we have the sender name and that's also fine. And the output should just be then the email. So with this, actually, we are done with the next part of the exercise. So we have now created a business rule who is actually checking who should um, approve this invoice. Of course, you can also create other conditions. You can also uh, for example, if you say, okay, that's now rather static, of course, I have maintained here a static email address. It could also be dynamic. You can also um, probably also include here um, a group, for example, or something like that. So really depending on the use case but for this demo purpose and for the sense on purpose, we are just following a straightforward approach. If you will. Going straight forward um, is also a good word because now the next thing what we would like to do, of course, as we have now determined who should be the approver, we also need to create a form. And in fact, we are not creating any form, we are creating a new approval form.
and call it invoice approval form. By the way, you could also, um, if you create such forms, and especially approval forms, you can also make them based on a form which you probably have used before. This can sometimes be helpful and really save you a lot of time. Um, but in this case, we are using some other attributes and will not use the form which has been created at the beginning to trigger the process itself. So the invoice approval form is there. And what is interesting, uh, compared also to the form which has been created at the beginning to start the actual process. So what you can see right now, we have here an approve and also and we check exit, if you will. But now let's go into the editor and create the form itself. So actually what will be displayed to the end user. And therefore we have um, a headline. And also add a paragraph, so nice wording. Invoice, and then we are entering actually the relevant data which you would like to display to be displayed to the end user. And this is also quite nice because here you can decide what kind of information should be shown to the end user to also not um, overload them at the end. So first and foremost, what we would like to add here is the company name. And as this is an approval form, and we don't want to allow the approval to change any data here, we put it as read only. And the same is true for the next field. In this case, um, it's the invoice number. Also, this would be um, read only. Then we have the next one, the number field. And this is the gross amount. Also, this one is read only. And last but not least, we also would like to know as an approver who has actually started this whole process. I mean, we could also take a look at a log, of course, during the execution of the process, but I think it's much more uh, convenient for the end user that they directly see who has triggered this whole stuff and who has been involved there. So now we have the company name, the invoice number, gross amount, every, um, every field here is marked as read only, and automatically also the approve and the recheck button are added here to such kind of an approval form. And now let us save also this one. So let me go back now to the process model itself. What happened there? So still there's this red marker. This means we still have some work to do. In fact, what we are now <clears throat> providing here is some information on the subject. So the title, which will be displayed then later on in the list of all the tasks. And therefore we would like to say, um, please approve invoice. And therefore we again are making use um, of the process content data in this case, we are using the document number, which is <clears throat> uh, similar to the invoice number itself. For the recipients, now, very interestingly, because as you remember, we have defined before who should be the approver, and therefore the output of this business rule has been the email, and this is also what we would use as potential recipient of this task uh, would then be the one who has been selected based on this business rule in this email here. We could even uh, define a due date. This is also important. Um, as you remember, in the beginning, I've told you, we also have the capability, which both the visibility to measure the performance. So therefore you could also take a close look at the due dates and probably then also interfere if the due date um, has already been reached or is close to be reached. But in this example, we just leave it as is. So, and then what you already know, uh, you have seen this now several times. So we now would like to also add or map the information from the process content to our form. And therefore we have again, the sender name, which is company name. We have the employee name, and you can always see, this is also very nice from where this information is coming from. In this case, the employee name is coming actually from the first form, which we have created to trigger the whole process. And the gross amount, and last but not least, also the invoice number slash document number. Again, let us save it here. So we have now created our approval form, but there are still some things to be done. And by the way, there is also still a red uh, marker. Why is this the case? Because the recheck button is still not 
connected to any further activity from DT2 and, and button or something like this. So in fact, what the system is doing in, in the background, if you will, it's always checking, hmm, is this process already ready to be released and deployed? And if not, you then get this information. But now let us move on with the last steps to get this ready. And in fact, what we would like to do after the invoice has been approved, we also would like to provide notification. Notification in case it has been approved, but also notification in case um, it has been unfortunately rejected. First, take a look at the positive path. And here we are adding a new form. And this would be actually the approval notification form. So again, we are opening here the editor and make a very lightweight user interface. So approved um, and um, has been approved. And then the only thing what we would like to give it here is actually the invoice number itself. So, and also as this is just an information, we also keep this as read only. So let us check what else is missing. I guess you already know what is missing. What could it be? Yes, we need to define some general information. So, We also would like to have the document number. And now, differently uh, compared to the approval form, we don't want to send this information to the approver because we already know what he had done, right? Um, but we would like to send it to the one, to the employee who has actually started the whole process. And therefore, we are selecting here the user um, who has started the process itself. So inputs, we also take here the invoice number, and then we are done with this form. So this has been the, the positive path. Now what could happen if this uh, invoice got rejected? Therefore, we also would like to include a new form and this is what we're doing here. And again, we are opening the editor and define here information. And also give here the invoice number again. Also mark this as we don't need. That's it. And let us now go back to our process and maintain the missing information. And you already know what's missing. Subject. Document number. And also here we would like, oops, not took too much. Here also we would like to send this information, of course, to the one, to the guy who started the whole process and add here the process started by in the user field. So, and last but not least, let us put in the invoice number, the document number, and then we should be done. Ah, not really, something is missing. Let's have a look at our design console it has inverted output. So in fact, what is missing here? So we have here now this output and this should also come to an end. We could either connect it here to this or create a new end event and that's it, et voila. And now also this error message is gone. We can now save it. So in fact, so in approximately uh, one hour, what have we done now? So we have created a completely new process from scratch. Nothing has been, been uh, predefined here. And let me just go here what, what we have done. So the trigger was already there. What we have included in this trigger in this case was a new form to start a process. Of course, this trigger could also be, for example, um, 
uh, that an API will be called or just imagine um, you have created a really nice application with SMP build apps, which allows you to scan the invoice, for example, to take a picture of it. And then actually you use this application to trigger this approval process. This could be a use case. Also where you can see them a nice combination of our uh, products, which are now under the name of SAP. But in this case, we are using a form to trigger the, the process itself. And then we are coming to a new first activity here. And this is not only a simple activity, I would say it's a quite strong activity because here in this extract invoice data, we have created a bot and included in the bot also document information extraction uh, capability. So this means here we are extracting the needed information from the invoice and where do we store it? In the process content so that we can reuse it, reuse it also uh, when we move along with the process. Moving along with the process means we are here determining who should be the approver and based on certain conditions what we have defined here as we know quite easy. So we are just checking um, which is the sender name, the company name um, from uh, whom this invoice is coming from, and based on this information, we are selecting the approver. In this case, it would be me. If you are doing it on your own in the exercise, it would be you or someone else, whoever you would like to include also in this exercise, probably your colleague. And once this is done, then the invoice approval form uh, will be called, and there uh, actually then someone needs to approve it, the one who has been determined before, and based on this, um, this decision, which the end user will do there, then the approval is successful. This means we would send out an approval notification form. If it has been rejected, we would also, of course, would like to notify the ones who have started the process. By the way, in case you say, huh, that's great, okay, now I can send out this task um, as an information, um, you could also use an email, which could be sent out there. But and just for the purpose of this exercise, we are using here this forms to show this to you. So I've talked too much, uh, enough, I would say. So the last thing what we would like to do before we can actually um, execute and run the whole process is just two things. The first would be to release everything. And by the way, when we are clicking on release, then it's checking what's going on. Um, it's also providing a first version number that you can also define um, or add any kind of comments. By the way, at a point in time when you probably release the next version, then it will provide you a kind of a proposal. Either you go with next number or, or smaller number, and then uh, depending what you have changed, you can also do this. So clicking on release, crossing the fingers that everything will work out. I hope so. That uh, looks good. So we are now here in the overview of the whole project, you can see all the artifacts which have been created, um, just to, to give you here an overview. And this is also nice because here you could, for example, also copy uh, part of these artifacts and reuse them also in your project, depending on your use case. But now we are, let's say, in the middle of the, the, the status where we have saved the project and where we would like to deploy it. So we have released it now. And now let me push the magic button to deploy the whole project. So. We confirm this and we click on deploy to deploy the invoice approval form. And hip hip hooray, deployment has been successful. How do you know this? On one side, there was the toast message. And on the other hand, you also see now this marker here deployed. And one other thing I would like to tell you, you have now also capability to go back to the, to the version which you have added. So this means now the actual um, available version is the deployed one, and this is also what the system is, is using to execute the process. And how this execution will happen, this will now be shown by Bria. So, Bria, back to you. Now you have successfully created the entire invoice processing project, and you have automated the entire scenario. And we were trying to test how do we only the automation, how the data is getting extracted. So as you can see, we have retrieved only the necessary information from the invoice, which was the sender name and invoice number and also the amount. Now let's execute the entire process. So how do we execute it? So navigate to your uh, deployed version. So once you navigate it, select on your form and then you have the form link, copy this link, 
And once you copy this link, you can execute your process. So when you're executing your process, you have to make sure that you have your uh, desktop agent tree in unattended mode because all these processes are happening in background. As I mentioned earlier, agent tree is an on-premise uh, component for automation. So I can easily now switch back between uh, my uh, modes as well. So how do I achieve that? So I go to the settings, then the mode settings, and I select on unattended mode and it would be activated. So once this is activated, then you would now enter your uh, employee name. You would enter your you would enter your file path and also the uh, file path where you have stored and current date as well. Okay, now enter. Let me enter my employee name here. I just give it as Priya and the file path. So the form is submitted successfully. And how do you monitor your, monitor how the business process is executing? So you can go back to your monitor section here and you can see the business process getting triggered. So you should be able to see all the business process that are getting executed. And you would even see your uh, desktop agent also, which is getting executed and uh, retrieving the results as well. So we have our invoice details, which is running here. As you can see, the data has been extracted, uh, the approver is determined, and now I would find my task in my approver here. So how do I uh, check my task? So Inbox is a pre-built application which is available in SAP Build Process Automation. So I, I would navigate to my Inbox here, and you would see that the invoice is available for the approval. and I would approve or reject it. I've seen the questions where people have asked that you want to reserve some of the tasks for, uh, for the approver, for particular approver, so you can reserve it by using the claim option there. If there are multiple approvers, then you can use a claim option and you can reserve it for yourself. So I approve it. So once it is approved, then I should ideally get a notification form that we have designed. So you could see that the invoice has been approved and a notification form is also received to the user. And now let's see what are all the new enhancements that are available in process automation. So you have successfully executed the project and now you have seen how do we automate the simple business process almost in an uh, hour and it was very user friendly, intuitive, low code and low code as well, where you can you had extracted the data with all the predefined models using the document uh, extraction service. Okay, now let's go back to the uh, few highlights that we have released in process automation. So the, below the, these are the enhancements that are there in form and the process builder. So we have the parallel branches, which is available. So in the parallel branches, which is nothing but uh, let's consider the scenario where you have multiple uh, departments which would require approval. So it's like uh, the tax department, procurement department. So we'd have multiple stages where the approval has to follow. So in those uh, scenarios, 
uh, you would use parallel branches and add all the approvals. Once the approval is completed from all the departments, then you would go to the final scenario of like posting your uh, invoice data, invoice creating an invoice uh, purchase order in your S4 system. So that's where you introduce a concept of uh, parallel branches and talking about the unified trigger. A business process can be triggered either using a form or an API trigger. In our current scenario, we have used a trigger using the form. And I'll later show you uh, how do we trigger the process using an API as well. So it can be uh, triggered either from the build apps or any other external system as well. And the form enhancements, uh, we have seen that you uh, many uh, UI elements like radio buttons, drop downs, and especially the uploading of the file option. So this is uh, available. And if you want to upload the file, the ma uh, mandatory thing is to subscribe to document management service in BTP cockpit. So the prerequisite is make sure that you subscribe to the uh, DMS, which is in the same account as your process automation. So once you subscribe successfully, then you have to create a destinations and map it so that the file upload element is available in your tenants. Otherwise, you would not see the element, even the UI element file as well. And uh, about the email task, you have seen that we are receiving all the tasks through the inbox uh, application, which is available in build process automation. You can even trigger the uh, mails task through email as well. So it uh, triggers an email to your either Gmail or to your Outlook as well. Okay, and coming to the uh, automation enhancements, as you have seen, we have the agent uh, three, which has a smart update, it has a simplified uh, fast uh, download, and also you have a, a faster project switching as well. It uses a modern technology compared to the uh, desktop agent two as well, and easy for version management and supports RDP as well. Since we were talking many things about the document extraction, I know it would be exciting for you when you want to learn about uh, what are the AI activities available from the Google. So we have the Google Vision AI SDK and the Google Document AI SDK available where you would extract the documents. So regarding the Google Document AI SDK, it provides the Google Document AI activities that would enable the document extraction using the processors that are defined in the Google Cloud Platform. And these activities are grouped as processors in your module, in your uh, Google account. So the prerequisite, if you want to use all these SDKs, is to have your uh, GCP account as well. Coming to the Google Vision AI, so SAP Build Process Automation provides a Google Vision AI SDK to tap the uh, Google OCR activities using this uh, Google Vision AI service. And it is available, this Google Vision AI is available on the GCP. And one of the primary activity that you have to do for the Google Vision AI SDK is to perform all the PDF text extractions using the Google OCR. And it is an alternative to the default uh, business OCR from SAP Document Information Extraction Service. To know more about the Google Vision AI SDK and Google Document AI SDK, you can attend our session AD 215, where you would be knowing all the new enhancements related uh, to automation along with these uh, enhancements as well. Now quickly, let's get into the system and see all the new enhancements. Okay, now, as I mentioned, uh, let's take the one of the uh, enhancements of the file upload. The UI element is available. File, since I've successfully configured my document management, and you can easily drag and drop this and uh, upload your uh, invoice document or any type of uh, documents. The maximum uh, uh, file capacity that you can upload is 20 MB, and you can customize your uh, options like what is a maximum number of files that you can upload here as well. And these files now can be again sent as an attachments to your approval form as well. So you would again create a uh, UI element of file upload and make it as a read only parameter and the mapping has to be done accordingly. So once you 
execute this, then you would be seeing how the file upload element is there. I'm just showing in few moments. The other enhancements which I was talking about is a mail functionality. So you can add your mail from the process builder. So in the controls, when you click on the plus button, you would be seeing all the uh, options here. So when you right click, you would be seeing the options of the controls here. So in the mail, you can directly add the mail here. So once you have successfully added it, then you can select the mail and who you have to send it and how do you configure the mail uh, parameter. So you can open the mail body editor and you can write the content that you have to send to your email body and there are all the process context parameters that you can mention. So you can mention all these as well. So that's how you configure the mail and this mail would send to your Outlook which I've uh, used for. So we talked about the DMS, we talked about uh, mail and then the API trigger as well, which I would be uh, showing it. So the form, the mail and in the API trigger, which I would uh, like to show you. So in this business process, the form is a trigger point for your business process, but I don't want to trigger uh, my business process using the form. I want to use an API trigger. So how do I achieve that? So let's, I don't want a form, so I'll just remove this. And then when you create a business process, that's how it is a blank one here. So I select the plus button and you have an option where you would add both the forms and API, but I want to add a new API trigger here. So I would select new API trigger. So I create my trigger here. I would say just my trigger as a name. And you would obviously want to pass the parameters from your external system. So how do you do that? You have to add the parameters here. So click on the process builder canvas to add your parameters. So you would configure the parameters here. You add the input. So all the parameters that you would like to uh, mention can be uh, uh, mentioned here. So that's how you would create an API trigger for your business process. So let's see how we would trigger the uh, uh, our API uh, process through the API. So we I directly am available in API business hub. And then now we have our post call where you would trigger your workflow instances here. And I just configured it. And I, in the request, you mentioned the body that you would require and the definition ID. The most important thing is your business process definition ID. So how would I get this definition ID? So I go to the build and then you would find your definition ID in the monitor section for your particular process. So this is a definition ID that you would be using for your API trigger in your uh, post call. So once I successfully executed this, so this would, you would return, it would return a response of 201 and it would trigger the business process. Okay, I think it's timed out here because I have just kept it for a longer time. Uh, so, and now let's see how you can, how you would uh, uh, see the new enhancements of attachments and everything. Okay, now I would go to the process where I would show you the attachments here where I would upload a uh, document here and then you would be seeing in your inbox. And simultaneously, we would even see the feature of how do we trigger the email as well using the mail uh, functionality in Process Builder.
Okay, now let me take the uh, URL that I want to trigger now. So how do we go to the uh, get the URL? You have to go to the deployed mode. Only the URL that you want to uh, trigger your business process would be available in the form, form trigger, and it would be available only if in the deployed version. So you have to select your form and then you can get the URL, which we will be executing shortly. So I would be just uploading the document now, any of the documents. I just upload an Excel file here. And I click on submit. So let me go to my inbox here. So as you can see, now I have my attachment in my approval form as well. So this is how you can send your attachments as well to your approval forms. And now let's even test the mail as well here. So in my workflow, I have shown you how I've used mail. So once a mail is triggered, so this is a way how you would uh, successfully receive the mail as well. I've used the notification and also the mail. So you can see the mail here. So I have received a mail as well, which I've used a mail option and also the notification option. Okay, now let's see what are the... other sessions that are there in check it, which would uh, give you more visibility as well. So you can see all this uh, content available and we have some of the scenarios which are available in the uh, learning journey uh, document as well. And we have the certifications also available for the process automation. These are the list of the other sessions which are available in TechAid. So I would recommend all of you to either listen to the recordings or also, we have the other virtual workshops, of course, uh, AD 182 has finished in the morning and uh, you can still go ahead and listen to the recordings. And if you want to get more overview on either uh, Google Vision AI SDK, then attend our uh, breakout session on get more from your bots on the build process automation. And these were the in-person workshops that we had in the Las Vegas. These are the new career opportunities which are available in the community. And these are all the great offerings uh, to complement your conference. You can prepare for a certification in the development roles with the free SAP learning journeys and also the live learning sessions from the SAP experts. So you can have a TechAid certification that can offer you along with the TechAid registration email as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, maybe I'll just have a look at the questions. And Stephen, uh, maybe if there are any questions that we have to check it, we can take uh, time to answer those questions, which are frequently asked. Yeah, thanks a lot, Priya. I think right now we're doing quite well also with the, within the chats. And I guess we have answered 
and some more spotting. And of course, feel free if you have further questions to maintain them in the chat window. We are still here to answer them. Um, so what you have learned right now, I think it was really a nice combination of the different capabilities we are offering with SAP Build Process Automation. And as I promised before, we haven't done any coding um, for you. So this means also people who are working in the in the related MLBs who are really the expert in their processes, um, we want to enable them also to, to improve their processes, to automate their processes, to extend certain processes where this is necessary with the help of SAP build process automation. And a nice thing here is also that you don't need to think at the beginning, hmm, do I want to create a business rule or do I want to do task automation or do I want to have any kind of user interaction or so? Completely up to you. You have the freedom to decide what you would like to do as uh, on your way uh, when you're defining the flow of the process what should happen, what could happen, and what kind of direction you would like to go there. I've seen the questions like where you can trigger the it from S4. Yes, you can trigger it. And we have something known as actions project as well, which I thought of mentioning you, where once the invoice is approved, you can post your invoice uh, details as well in the S4 system. So that is achieved through the actions project. To know more about the uh, posting of data into S4 and actions project, you can have a look at the AD261 uh, session. And regarding the presentation, we will upload it uh, soon in the GitHub material that we have shared it. And here's a very nice question. How process automation is different than IRPA? So it stands for Intelligent Robotic Process Automation and BTP Workflow. So this has been SAP workflow management. Well, in essence, it's a combination of both. So what we have done here, when we have released a product first time in February this year, we have combined the capabilities which are coming from SAP Intelligent Robotic Process Automation and SAP Workflow Management under one umbrella and added on top this uh, very nice citizen developer experience which you have seen today. So, and this is really providing now the needed flexibility from our point of view also, so that you can use make use of different technologies, but more or less on, make use of the most important technologies when it comes to business process management and your automation projects within your organization. And the sample that we have executed now is available in the store as a pre-built content as well. Of course, it does not have decisions, but the basic uh, template is already available in the store content where you can reuse it. You can even have a look at the store as well. And uh, if you are, um, as I see many requirements re regarding the DMS, we even have a store sample regarding the document management repository on how to write a custom script, of course, company requires on demand, you can use it temporarily. Otherwise, the feature of accessing the documents from DMS will be available next year. So we have a lot of pre-built uh, store content, uh, both from the learning perspective and also from the uh, business content perspective. So please have a look at all the store content. So the invoice processing is only the, is the name of the uh, content as well. Okay, let me quickly share my screen and show the store content as well. So regarding the learning content, so as I said, now we have this document uh, management repository activities. So how to use document management service. So this sample defines the uh, methods, uh, how to upload, download the document from DMS. Of course, as I said, it's purely a custom script as of now, but later on it will be available as an activities in the next year. And regarding the invoice sample that we have developed just now, you can see it under the learning content under the invoice.
should be as a sample. Okay, I will share you the link because I just don't find it here. It's already available. You can even uh, try creating a project from your in uh, process as well, where you did not redo it from beginning, where you can just say add create from template and a business process is automatically created for you. So this is the advantage of having the store content. Simultaneously, we have a lot of content in our business uh, as well, where you can directly use all your store content Okay, I see the uh, invoice approval sample here. Yeah, so this is a sample that we have developed in our ex today's exercise. And you can directly create it from the template and use it. Create from template, but create a pro uh, process and it would available directly in your system. And we have many more uh, bots which are available, directly usable and can be customizable uh, for your customer needs. Okay, I see a question of when will you add the functionality to integrate the custom UI application when designing a form? So you can see it in the roadmap. Uh, maybe the roadmap link can be shared here. So it, uh, we have the plans to even release that as well, but next year, all the uh, roadmap items can be seen in the SAP process automation roadmap section. And I even see a question regarding the business rules here. I understand that when we have developed, created the decisions or the business rules uh, in our process, uh, it's not the low code and low code friendly. That's the reason we have an import and export option where you define all your conditions or rules in your Excel, and then you can directly import it as well. So which is one of the uh, very easy way that you can import your decisions to your process. I see many of the questions that uh, we couldn't see the process automation in trial account. We are so sorry for that, but we have conducted the session in the morning. Uh, users were able to access. We, are, uh, we regret the inconvenience. We'll rightly, uh, we'll check it right away. Uh, what was the issue that was not seen? I assume uh, it should be available either as SAP build process automation or SAP process automation. Still, anyways, since you have the recording and also the sample, you can go ahead and uh, do the exercise after the uh, session as well. I see a question here uh, saying that when you are trying to add dependencies, you have got received an error saying that you were unable to retrieve the package from the store. Um, I assume that first you have to uh, retrieve your, uh, just check if you have your document SDK available in the store. Uh, and then you can add the dependency. Okay, regarding the desktop agent three queries, uh, I see some of you have faced issues uh, in the prerequisite document where it was mentioned you have to navigate to your uh, RSPC portal, create a secret ID, but there, uh, I notice an authorization issues there. Make sure that you have a proper roles, especially the admin role assigned. If you do not have an admin role and um, still you have another option where you can directly download it from the tools.hana.ondemand.co in the cloud section. But the only thing is if you download it manually, you will not have an option of automatic updates because one of the main feature, easiest feature for desktop agent three is an automatic update where you need not always go to your uh, marketplace, service marketplace, install it and then register it and enable your extensions as well. So with this desktop agent three, uh, all these are sorted out. So make sure that you have the roles and uh, allow it to install from the uh, lobby itself. I see a question regarding the mail server as well. Uh, for the mail server, uh, for the mail server, uh, I uh, note we ha I have to tell you that we have to configure the SMTP server for that. Just using a mail will not work. Uh, the prerequisite is configuring your SMTP server, and then once it is configured, if you have to successfully test whether the configuration is correct or not, please log into the settings section uh, in your 
uh, lobby there in your page setting section and you have a mail server option just you can say send test mail and that's how you would confirm that your uh, destinations that you have created in your BTP cockpit are successful and you are able to receive the email as well. I'll just wait for a few more minutes because I've been seeing uh, participants uh, curiosity to ask many questions and very nice to see that. And I even see that the session, uh, the functional consultants are able to even do this session, which was uh, truly the low code and no code friendly. And it proved that we had completed uh, as a toughest uh, uh, business process in few, we have automated the toughest business process in a few seconds as well. Okay, I see that how do we even uh, integrate, suppose let's take the scenario uh, where you have uh, want to scan your invoice document from the uh, SAP Build Labs, which was app gamer earlier. Yeah, you can still go ahead, you scan your document, uh, you can build your app, scan your invoice, and then you can integrate with SPA. Uh, to send all the information since we have the api trigger option available which which i had shown you so you can send all the details to your uh, process automation and finally uh, once approvals are finished you can even post the data into s4 as well so it's a complete end-to-end -end scenario uh, where you can scan the document from the app driver and simultaneously uh, the process, the, this process is happening in the background where the data extraction is happening, approval, and then posting in S4 as well. So you can see the power of SAP build as a whole solution, where is a build apps, process automation, and uh, the digital workspace as well, how they are well tightly integrated. Okay, I guess almost all the questions are answered now. Stefan, do you want to add something? I think. Uh... Two attendees right now typing. So let's see whether ah, any okay. questions yeah. are coming out. But I think we have mentioned all the important parts. And um, I just would like to encourage you to join us in the SAP community. Um, also take a look at the videos we have out on YouTube. There is a dedicated channel on SAP build process automation. And last but not least, um, please also be invited to follow us on the social channels, like for example, Twitter or LinkedIn. There we are pushing the latest news about the product. And by the way, actually next week on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, we are doing a next um, webinar with our um, chief product manager, Thomas Holmrein. And we are doing kind of a recap of the latest, um, of the latest developments, but also providing some outlooks what's coming next. Because this year, has been quite interesting and I can promise you the next year will even be more interesting in the area of post automation. And I've seen a question was... asking like, yeah, please go ahead. No, 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 please. So uh, how long will the tutorial be available, the enablement content? So it's available all the time, but anyways, this exercise is pointing out to our developer tutorials uh, where we had created our uh, content as well. And you can even explore the other uh, enablement content for SAP build process automation, where we had uh, uh, configured the destinations. If you want to see how do you configure the email, integrating with the chatbot and many more things. I'm even directly copying the link for the one which we had linked in our prerequisites as well. I think we can close the call, but we will still be there if there is anything. And of course, you can also contact us via mail and join us in the SAP community. Looking forward for more interactions and wishing all of you good luck with trying out SAP build process automation. Um, if you still fear and um, face some issues, please come back to us. We are happy to support you there. Thank you all for attending the session.